Hey, Silvern here with this week's video on Elden Ring. If you are like me, some of the bosses and mini bosses can be a little bit too easy on New Game Plus, so you look for ways to either keep challenging yourself or finding goofy ways to have fun. The Envoy's Longhorn is the latter for me. I am a simple Elden Lord. I saw a horn that blew bubbles, and that sealed the deal. <laughs> Little did I realize how incredibly powerful those bubbles could be. Not necessarily in pure damage, but in poise damage. When used in certain ways against most bosses, you can easily cause poise damage after a mere two uses of the Ash of War, leading to numerous opportunities for critical hits. Stick with me and I'll show you several examples of this and run the equipment by you so that you can also toot your own horn. Obviously, the first piece of equipment we need to make this work is the Envoy's Longhorn, which requires 23 strength, 11 dexterity, and 18 faith in order to wield. It can be attained by killing the Long Oracle Envoys in Mikola's Halig Tree. The way I personally find for it to be the easiest to farm is by following along this route you see me taking here and killing these four Envoys after spawning at the Halig Tree Canopy Site of Grace. Aside from the constant danger of falling off the branches, you also need to keep an eye out for the giant ants and the smaller oracle envoys, specifically the three that are up above this route. Most of the oracle envoys won't aggro on you so long as you don't bother them first, but you need to beware the three that are up above here because they will attack you within certain ranges. This means you have to be a little careful if you have to slow down to fight because their bubbles will heavily damage you if not kill you. And I'm not speaking from experience whatsoever. Either way, once you have the Envoy's Longhorn, you've got the first step completed. While you're here, another important item to grab is the Envoy Crown, a helmet that will increase the damage of bubble skills by 15%, specifically the Ashes of War you get from the three different Envoy Horns, not the spells. In order to get it, go up this branch here with the patrol of giant ants and it will be on a body that is just past this Oracle Envoy Giant. Aside from the Envoy Crown, the rest of the equipment is actually up to you. I personally would recommend going for armor that greatly increases your poise. The animation for casting Bubble Shower isn't terribly long, but it is long enough to get hit and knocked out of. If you want to maximize your odds of doing large poise damage to your enemies, boosting your own poise so that you don't get interrupted is vital to this build. I personally fill the other slots with the Bull Goat's armor set, which you get from killing the Great Horn Trageth, Patch's assassination target for the Volcano Manor. If you find that you don't have the endurance to be able to wear three pieces of the Bull Goat's armor, one option that you could use instead is the Bull Goat's Talisman that you find in the Dragon Barrow Cave, and it will reduce the amount of poise damage that you take by 25%. The talismans that I end up using for my build is the Two Fingers Heirloom, the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, the Sacred Scorpion Charm, and the Shard of Alexander. The main one that I would suggest changing out for the Bull Goat's Talisman if you need it would be the Two Fingers Heirloom. Having a good defense along with high poise gives you better survivability for when you inevitably get hit by attacks. A couple other options would be the Star Scourge Heirloom to increase strength, or the Old Lord's Talisman to increase the duration of spells. The Old Lord's Talisman would be best if you cast the usual spells for buffs, such as Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. There are two different ways you can tackle using the Envoy's Longhorn, either with Strength, which has a C rank, or Faith, which is a B rank. I personally chose to go the strength route because I was originally using bigger weapons in this playthrough, such as halberds and colossal weapons, but then I came across the horn and wanted to try it. I don't think it would be a good idea to solely rely on the bubbles throughout the game, as there are plenty of more agile boss fights that will either be able to dodge bubble shower or attack you quickly enough in succession to knock you out of the animation. If you're incredibly dedicated, you might be able to land a few hits here and there, but at that point, it would typically be easier to just use the hammer itself. The unique thing about this weapon is that you have to remember, it is still a great hammer. So even while the bubbles are a huge appeal of using it, the power that regular attacks put out can just help make it a fun wielding experience. Now keep in mind that my numbers may be vastly different from your own. This is only my second journey through the Lands Between, but I've invested a lot of time in defeating nearly every enemy I come across. At the point of all these tests, I'm at level 254. I have Vigor and Strength both at 60, Endurance at 45, Dexterity at 48, which the Envoy's Longhorn does have a D ranking with. And then my Faith is at 30. If you wear either the Star Scourge Heirloom or the Two Fingers Heirloom, it will raise either Strength or Faith by 5 points respectively. 
Also, take note that with my equipment load how it is, my poise is at 87. Unless I get hit by a very large enemy, I can tank through most small and medium hits without ever breaking out of the Ash of War animation. So now from here, take a look at just a few of the demos I got in order to prove to you how much damage you can really output with this weapon. As a disclaimer, none of my clips you will see here have me performing any buffs, whether by spells or by drinking the Wondrous Physic. Why, you may ask? The answer is simple. I'm lazy. I'm a casual gamer. But a better answer could be is that I try to make the game harder where I can. With that said, there were a couple of tests that I ran with different tiers for the Wondrous Physic to try and see what could work well with this combo. However, the conclusion that I came to is that there isn't a whole lot that can be done with it. The best recommendation that I could make would be the Holy Shrouding Crack tier to boost holy damage, and then the Stone Barb Crack tier to inflict more poise damage. Because of the way the Ash of War works, it still does take two uses of it in order to break enemy stances, it just takes less bubbles hitting them overall. Another potential one that you could use would be the Faith Knot Crystal tier in order to raise your faith since the weapon has high scaling with it. One last suggestion that I would make as far as how you can actually utilize the bubbles would be to not always have a lock on your enemy. For large enemies like dragons, where you can lock onto their leg, the bubbles will attempt to go to that one small spot and you're going to miss out on a lot of damage that they can do since they don't typically consolidate in one single area. Instead, adjust your camera angle without locking on and have the larger area of the body in the center of your screen. That will send the bubbles out in a much more helpful way and they're going to cover a lot more area in order to deal much more devastating numbers. Just remember, when you have the high poise and a large health bar, you can tank your way through certain attacks in order to get a lot more uses out of the Ash of War. You can even use this technique on the Elden Beast itself, and the same rule applies. Perform Bubble Shower twice, and it will go down for those beautiful, beautiful critical hits. You just have to be careful since many of its combos can easily wipe you out when you're stuck in the animation. Well, I hope this video helps show you a new fun way that you could explore the lands between and how you can destroy your enemies with nothing more than bubbles. What other unique weapons do you like to use to make your journeys more interesting or challenging? Is it for the Ash of War that comes with it or for the looks of the weapon itself? Feel free to let us know in the comments below. Follow along with us on our other socials, especially Twitter, where we discuss a little of what we're working on next and what our schedule looks like. Thank you for sticking with us to the end, because as we all know, time is runes.